so that we'll learn something today. Teaching with excellence. Let's look at the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. I'll be sharing from my life experience mostly. Because there are a lot of things that academic you have known already. I don't want to re-emphasize them. I like being unique. That's one um, feature of my life. I'm a scientist, but I don't like copycat thing. A lot of my colleagues want students to repeat everything verbatim in the ways in Ababio or one of those books. But all my students have taught this year, they believe that, they know that I believe in uniqueness, creativity. My comments when I was in the class were unique. And my students loved them. I did not see people giving those comments that way. But my students have got to love them. I have a lot of students in those years I taught in the Federal Government Girls College, Boko. I've seen sometimes some of them will screenshot those comments in their books in secondary school and bring them on Facebook, that these comments motivated them. Sometimes I say, bravo, fabulous, excellent, throughout your book, and I cover that, it moved them, but I didn't see other teachers doing it. It was even a federal, a government school, but I had to invent my own way of doing comments, and it left an impact. People have left married with children. They are still going back to their scripts and notebooks to look at those comments. This is what it means. What do we mean by excellence? I didn't initially want to talk about it, but one of the de definitions in the dictionary is that it's a quality of being outstanding and being extremely good. So by God's grace, I think I may not be boasting, but I think I'm not under. Because I've left the class since 2016, but I'm still involved actively. This session that just ended, a school asked me to hire a chemistry teacher. I couldn't get it. So one of the managers had a daughter in SS2. So I was compared to step in for two terms. I've been squeezing time twice in a week to go and teach in the class. That means I'm not spent yet. After about how many years? From 2016 to now. About eight years. And I've been able to impact in these uh, children. I just came back from NECO coordination and marking in Boko yesterday. I'm the examiner grade one there in charge. So we are still involved in levels of learning and quality control, engaging, being engaged by schools here and there. So you can be outstanding if you are not, but as a child of God, there's excellence built in you already, as we are going to see. Let's look at the book of Colossians chapter three, verse 23. We begin from scriptures you will soon discover that excellence education is even the idea of God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. If somebody is there already, you can read for us, or the media will be helping us. Okay. And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. This is what inspired me to do the most, everywhere I went. From the class, I moved from various rungs as a subject teacher to uh, head of department. I came into a school in Makodi here after some years in FGC Boko as a temporary teacher. And I was being engaged as a chemistry teacher. I came in as a first head of department and dean of studies, two positions combined. The head of science and technology. I had to start science department from scratch. And then I was a dean of studies. I then moved from there to become the vice principal administration. So I've taught in the class, I've been in administration. And I always tell my subordinates that don't grumble about your pay or your job or the behavior of the children. Just do it as if you were serving God. And that principle has helped me. And somebody once shared with us that many times you don't sow, reap where you sow. But keep sowing. Sometimes it's not even your lifetime. The T people believe that some things you do, you don't reap now. If you want to contest for cheap tansy and you don't win, they'll tell you that don't shed blood, don't cause so much harm. Just relax. You may become king one. I understand that the immediate past to T, Alfred Akawe Tokula, some years back, his father wanted to be a chief somewhere in Guma here. And he contested, his people say, no. Tokula just said, just wait. In future, your children can become a chief. When the chieftaincy came for the totif to be given this way, they now remembered that his father wanted to become a chief. So can you see that it's true? Even in nature that it's not where you sow. Sometimes it's not in your time, in your generation. 
And this one is not only good, bad also. Because I know I'm talking to a teacher. Some of us are very brutal. We even say that I'm going to be very brutal in this class. You know? But the teacher is a caregiver. The teacher is a shepherd. Do you know that Jesus was a teacher and you shared the same ministry with him? He was a teacher of the word. God himself is a teacher. For God to have the patience to come down every now and then to sit down and teach you precepts, to be patient with you, uh, doing um, Sunday school and all these new believers class. Do you know that when we are teaching new believers class, the Holy Ghost is the one doing it? When we are preaching, when Reverend is preaching, the chapel and other people, is it not teaching we are doing? But most times, we are not friendly. It's very rare you see a shepherd just beating the cattle or things like that, unless it's a stubborn one. If he's injured, they carry it. So the Lord will help us. That is what helped me, and I believe it will help you. Don't look at how much you are earning. When I was in FGGC Boko, they engaged us to be temporary teachers, maybe just for two years. Then they would convert us to permanent staff. And we were placed on level six for about eight years, nine years. I went there in 1998 and went, left in July 20, 2007. In 2006, Obasanjo Sanjo disengaged us that we were not properly employed instead of engaging us. Meanwhile, politicians were bringing other people. So, a lot, some got jobs in other places and left. I eventually came down to a private school in Makodi here in 2007. PT engaged us. But it didn't stop me from doing well. I couldn't lay my hands within the short time awards that I've got in the course of being in that school. Best subject teacher, best class teacher, best club patron. At the point, I was in exam committee, timetable committee. I was the uh, chaplain of the Protestant Fellowship. I was patron of music club, even though I was a spirit feed person. The school appointed me because they knew I had a musical inclination. inclination. Initially, I wanted to say, you know, when I went to pray, the Holy Ghost said, take it. It will help you to influence and filter the kind of songs the girls will sing giving out occasions. And that's what I did. So anytime they were to do a presentation during PT, I would be the one to pick a song that had a philosophy by that one, and I regulated it. So at the time, I had so many portfolios. Then a principal came that started um, what we call um, valedictory service. At the end of the session, they would do a service, parents and students would come before the graduation. And when they started it, I had a committee that had people on level 14, 15, but I, I was the one on level 6 that was the chairman because they saw that I was the one that was most competent in spiritual matters. So I would be in meetings with people that are very senior, but I was the chairman of the committee. And whatever I said about the valedictory service, the, the principal took it. Why? Because they saw I was outstanding. In the first place, I was single when I was made patron of the Petrosanse Protestant Fellowship in a girls only school. A young man. And I don't think uh, I'm, uh, I'm an ugly man. So they have been worried to put girls that are single, pretty girls in the hands of a bachelor. But they saw that I was spiritually inclined. And I would be with them counseling the whole day, spending my whole Sundays there. And you can go there and check the records and all my ex-students, whether I had anything hanky-panky with, with them those nine years I was in that school. But today, a lot of us, even fathers already married, we are in schools and we are playing a lot of games with the girls. Let the Lord help us. If you are excellent, you will refuse portfolios. That is what I've seen in my years of work in church and everywhere. Because somebody said a star cannot be hidden. No matter where you are, you'll be noticeable. You will not even want to stand up before you know somebody will spot you. I've seen sometimes when Panam Pesipo, he will just sit in the crowd. The organizer will not even know that he's there. But before you know, somebody will sit and say, no, no, no. Sometimes nobody will Until they invite him. Then you discover that, ah, uh it's -uh, Panam Pesipo that was seated somewhere wearing one simple dress. And until the man starts singing, you will not know that this man is a great singer. When he starts touching the keyboard and other instruments. So, be excellent. Do everything you do as unto the Lord. Okay. Thank you. And in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 11, 
I, I suppose. If we see one more scripture, then we look at other things. I say we have known a lot. There are many books on lesson plan, methodology, and those things. We may touch them small. I've discovered also in doing lessons because people have challenges in my subject area, chemistry. I don't know why. But as for me, it has been my favorite from secondary school, so I don't find it challenging. But I've seen situations where somebody has A1 in physics and math, but will have a D7 in chemistry. It's strange. Because your ability in physics is supposed to almost tally with chemistry. So most times when I'm doing remedial lessons, I've discovered that it's attitude that makes many people to fail. And in learning too, we are not able to be our best. Even in becoming a fervent child of God, it's attitude that makes you not to be there. Another person can discipline himself or herself to pray, to hold himself, have self-discipline and the rest. Luke 10. Sorry, I didn't even open it. I thought the media were going to give it to us. Luke chapter 10, verse 11. Okay. Can we go forward? It seems to be verse 14. I suppose. It seems uh, I've mixed it up. Sorry about that. But I'm trying to locate that scripture. Now Jesus said, if you are not faithful in somebody's business, can they give you your own? Because most times we say, let me open my school first. While you are in somebody else's school, in a government school, you handle it anyhow. But the white man says, old habits do what? Old habits, you'll be surprised that even when you have your school, you may not be able to give it the best. I've had opportunities to start schools for some people. And I always tell them, where you want to be in 20 years, please start standard now. Don't just buy some ramshackle tables now. Just manage any textbooks now. Go for the very best hands that you can't afford with your money. People say, no, it's just a small school in a one-room apartment. Start with that standard. Teach the children with quality standard. Don't wait until you get to a certain environment. So have that attitude. When I was in the class, I would always tell my children, I'm not training you based on the school standard here. I'm training you to be international citizens. So that anywhere you go, your behavior and your chemistry will sell anywhere. That is the, the world standard. You don't train your children because you are in Kwayongo, you are in Makodi. So let them do this. And many students will quarrel initially when you are marking them based on standards, especially those of us that are examiners. Don't listen to what they are saying. I will always say I'm looking at the future of your SSC because they are looking at marks. You mark so hard that I couldn't get 70. I used to get 90. Why am I getting 70? Not knowing that you are following the standards that when they write their excellent exam, they may even pass better than what you are doing now. So I will always tell them I'm a prophet, I'm a man of the future. And many of them at the end, they get good grades. So they come back to appreciate you. But some of us are afraid of school and parents. Why is there massive failure? If this massive failure and it's justified, you work on it. By the way, you discover that people that have made it in life have been people that once failed. People that failed and exploit their failure, they end up being better than those that just had a trajectory of going up. Check in history. People like... Uh, ben Carson and so many of them, even one of the American presidents, is it uh, Dwight Eisenhower or so, one of them. They wrote him off in school that he was too dull to do anything. What about Bill Gates? He dropped out from engineering school and then went back and started trying his hands on some old pieces of uh, machines and then became a great inventor. I don't think he even went back to complete the engineering school. But if his money and those products had not spoken, if it were in Nigeria here, nobody would give him a chance because he believed in paper qualifications without producing anything. But thank God for the economy now that is knocking us. We are going back to skills, what you can produce, not what you have in the head. So today, at the point, he was the richest man on earth. Why? Designing computer programs. Not even the computers themselves. At any given time, then, any computer you, 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 you encountered had something 
a programming from Microsoft because this man reinvented himself. There's one great inventor that said failure is not a, a problem. But when you fail, exploit your failure, that is a challenge of many. Many people cannot walk their Christian world because after saying, Jesus, I've received you, they went back and, 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 and pulled a, a cigarette again. And they, they gave up and they cried. And they had guilt feelings for the next 10 years. And they ended up losing the faith. How many times did Peter deny Jesus before he went to the cross? And extra Bible sources say Peter still even went back. I think there was one incident after resurrection too. They had to bring, bring him back from fishing, isn't it? But he rose to be. Even then, Jesus had seen that in him. That it would be a foundation that he would build the church. But physically, it didn't look like it. It was so shaky. Before a question would land, they had dropped answer. But did Jesus give up on him? It may be a lesson for us in the class. Those students that answer hastily, don't give up that. Oh, you are, you are too daft. Sometimes it's not. You just need to wait for them. In the Western world, Europe and America, they don't have one lesson plan for 20 students. We have a lesson plan for all 20 because their temperaments and their abilities are not the same. Do you see how? That's why they have individualized learning. You may not have a class of 20 facing you. You just give people assignments and just, they just turn it in or you go around and see it. Sometimes they are not even facing, everybody is facing his locker. That is why somebody can fail. Our own in Nigeria here is road learning. Garbage in, garbage out. If you can memorize, including medical schools and the rest. When we write exams and finish, we can't remember what we have read. In the sciences, we memorize five pages of a formula that we derive and drop in the exams. But when we come out, we can't reproduce it. If you talk to us as we are going for the exams, we will not be able to answer you. We are afraid that the thing will evaporate. How many of us were on, on that road before? Because in Nigeria, yes, road learning, cramming. But they believe in you understanding. Even South Africa and some countries are doing it. If you are given a topic and you fail, they keep giving you the exam until you pass, then they enter the score. If they have History 101, first semester, you fail it. You have history 101, second semester. And it will be another lecturer that, in, in case the man you didn't like his temperament or his face, there's another person teaching that. There's also a third semester that has 101. So they don't have room for carryovers. And I think if we have that in Nigeria here, I think we started that thing, they called it Izin Hamatan semester, some universities. But some lecturers say it's is, is making education too cheap. But this is what is producing the best brains in the West. They canceled it. I think Uniagri giving had it some. How many of us were in Uniagri around that time? Uh, they used to call it, uh, yes, so that you remedy those courses you failed first and second semester. So, education is a matter of changing your behavior. We say teaching is said to be uh, uh, done when there's uh, an impartation. Learning has taken place when what you have taught, the children can absorb it, and there's a change in behavior. So we know about the affective domain, the uh, psychomotor, and which other one? Cognitive, which is the one that Nigeria and Africa emphasize so much. Once you can recall, oh, you are brilliant. What is this letter A? Then it's okay. So may the Lord help us that we move. Because the world is moving, Nigeria has to move. Many of us are planning to move overseas or to other countries. Benue is like uh, a state that has education as an industry. People will be coming from other nations to shop for people here. It happened some years ago. Katsina, Kanu, Zamfara, and Sokoto came for science and English teachers and math. But now they have produced their own. Other nations may be coming for Nigerian uh, teachers also. Will you arm yourself or when you go there you will not be found relevant? So let's begin to arm ourselves with those skills. So excellence is God's own thing. Fellow Duroto, one of those presidential aspirants, he's a motivational speaker, and he used to go around schools. He said there are three categories of teachers. There's the average teacher that just drops his lessons and doesn't care about anybody, that cannot remember anybody's face. There's the successful teacher, 
the one that can produce good results but doesn't remember those children again. You may even make A1 in subject and he will not remember you after a year or two. He doesn't know your name. Then he talked about the great teacher. That the great teacher is the one that makes impacts on the children's lives for eternity. He did a survey and asked people that had gone through schools and asked them, who was your best teacher? And everybody, the best teacher ended up not being the one that helped them to make the best results. One lady said her best teacher the, was the person that welcomed her into school the first day. That she had a lot of fears about teachers, that teachers are brutal. But that man was so welcoming that day. That was the one that made impression first day in nursery. She was a grown person. Another one said he's a teacher that helped him in extramura. He failed English and when he went for extramura studies, the way the person helped him was not those ones that taught in secondary school. About three or four. So he discovered that the teacher that makes the most mark on students is the one that touches their lives. And that is an excellent teacher. I served in between 1994 and 95 in Baptist High School, Joss. So when I got there, the Southern Baptist missionaries were in charge. They will be principal and they have some missionaries from the U.S., Southern USA. Reverend Mike Stone Cipher was a principal then. I think he's still somewhere in um, Hillcrest in Joss, if he has not gone back. He was a reverend by trained in education. There were other ones like Reverend Bowman and the other ones. So they taught us that teaching involves the entire personality. It's like when you are teaching children, don't just be teaching math and not looking at the faces of the children. That was where I, I bought my concept of teaching. And when I came back after service, I began to uh, engage it here. And it, it left impressions. So I began to teach my students, look at them as human beings. If a, ch a child's viral fell down, I would bend down and pick it, which was strange to many of the girls in school. I still do it. But many of us can't do that. You cannot arrange your, your student's color. You know, you are, you are too big. You are so high there. But the shepherd mingles with the sheep. Is that also? They carry sheep. They don't, the full animal doesn't feel bad. I smell it like uh, his cattle. In fact, he feels good. The cattle is his sense of worth. When you, you have empathy with your students, they can understand what you are uh, uh, going through. Even when you are a teacher, they will not understand. They say, Kai, uh, uh, Mr. Mashika has tried. It's our fault that we are not understand. I've heard them say those things. When I'm teaching a, a difficult concept, I'm trying my best. They even pity me that Kai, I've tried though. It's just that they are not the ones that understand. They are not angry with me again. That I'm not the one that is not delivering. Because we had empathy. Have we had that kind of thing before? A story is told of a man. That one day say, Kai, he will, he, will, he will answer the altar call that this, this man has been coming and preaching for too many times. He will better receive Jesus today so that this man will rest. <laughs> you know, it, it can happen because the man was too persistent. Every day coming and preaching. So he said, today let me give my life to Christ. So that I will satisfy this man. So you can get to that level that you have empathized with your students. That they will cry. Madam is trying for us. If you have not come to school, all your students will know. But some teachers will not be in school for two weeks. Nobody will notice their absence. I'm not saying robbing shoulders, collecting money from them. I know some dirty things that teachers did. I, I'm, I believe they are believing teachers here. I was in schools where teachers would collect full scrap sheets for tests and they will not buy it. They will tell the children to write the exam on question paper. How many of us have been in that environment before? Let's confess. These are not saints from heaven. Me, I've been to those environments. I didn't do it, but I've seen. Except they have stopped now. They will collect money from the whole class. Then they will set very short, short questions and ask the children to turn the question paper and write exams there. And pocket the, how much is full scrap money that you are selling your integrity? Meanwhile, we say the teacher affects eternity. What impression will those children go with? You preside over exam or practice. You are bringing pieces of paper and removing them in the hall and dropping them like one spy. And you are not ashamed. Can those children respect you? And we do it. How much money? How much money would they give you in the whole exam as a subject teacher? Some schools will not even give you up to 10,000 for the whole exam. They collect plenty of money by you, the teacher, doing it that they have made you to work against your conscience. You may get less than 5,000. Am I lying? 
Even that five thousand, you sweat sometimes before the Dean will give you a VP account. But not in this rehab center. You have center to go so many Nigeria. times before they will give you the money. And heaven too is watching, because these people are souls that are put in your hands. By and large, cheating does not pay. Cheating does not pay. That's what I've discovered. The people that are best teachers, best engineers, and all the ones that sometimes even have all distinctions, sometimes. My grade in my degree, second class lower. But today, nationally, I go for national coordination. Very few people can beat me when I'm discussing chemistry. Even people that have mastery degrees and PhD in chemistry. So it's not the grade you got, but it's how much God helps you. And it's the Holy Ghost that did it for me. A lot of things I knew is not because I was so intelligent. But the Holy Ghost will help you break it down. You are in the class, you are teaching. You are stuck. The children can't understand. The Holy Ghost will give you another dimension to teach. Has it happened to anybody before? I don't know. It has happened to me. I cannot take credit for anything I have achieved in learning. Even going to school to teach is the Holy Ghost that sent me there. After my youth service, I, I gave my, my one year to God as first fruit. Then I began to pray. What do I do? I'll pray. Jobs were coming, BCC and the rest. I'll pray God will not give me energy. Then one day, one young man came from my alma mater, Boko High School, that the, their former chemistry teacher is late. They are looking for a teacher. I prayed and God said, go. As you teach chemistry, teach me as I respect your chemistry. Preach Jesus to them. And that's what I did. And I'm still doing in schools. I don't open the Bible most times, but as I'm teaching, I'm rebuking people with scriptures. My students have known. They say, ah, that teacher that is always preaching, where is teaching? I don't know about you. When you misbehave, I'll use a scripture. I'll tell you the implications. This thing you are doing, the implication on your dignity, your family, your community, if you're a woman, your gender. So this is how it was. God sent me to the class. That means God is interested in education. He told the Israelites that pass on these things. Tell them that I'm the one that brought them out of Egypt. And then you know the popular scripture. Uh, Proverbs chapter 22. Isn't it? Can we read it? Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. God is interested in education and is in excellence. I think one of the titles that we give God is excellent. Excellent Jehovah. So if our God is excellent, will your children be less? Hmm. Proverbs chapter 22. I hope I'm not speaking too fast. Sorry. I'm passionate about what I do. I don't know. It seems I'm speaking too fast. Because heaven is bleeding. Many of us are misrepresenting heaven. I'll tell you that I did represent Jesus very well in the class. Even now, wherever I go. My examiners know that I'm Christ-like. I treat them with dignity. I'm very fair. If there's a slot for an examiner, I give it to the person that came first, coordinated well, and is, is having the highest qualification or experience. But some of my colleagues pick their boys that, that just came today and didn't make them team leaders. Why they let people on the line? So everywhere you are, we are told that we are apostles in the market place. You are made by God, you are there. You may think it's by accident, but God has kept you there. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Yes? Nobody has opened that. It's a popular scripture. Okay. Mm. Thank you. It's a popular scripture. Training is not a small thing, it's not, it's not one day talking. I'm a father. My children are all in their teens now, but we are still training them. I thought it would end when they were, we were carrying them, when they were sucking. We give instruction, check the doors before you go out. Many times I come back, they, they bolt the front door, but the back door is open. I will say, oh God, God has helped us. We will scream. I say, it's a check. Every day before you lock, they check the back door, and they are grown. The first two that are twins, they are 19, but they are still doing it. I'll come back, I'll scream. We've told them in the night before you go and sleep, check all doors. They will not check. When we wake up, doors are open. So you can see training is a lifelong thing. I'm in my late 50s now. My father is alive. He's about 90-something. Still preaching. He's still training me. I'm not done being a son. He has not stopped fatherhood. Even while I sit there, he called me. I told him that I'm in this conference. 
He still calls me every day. We talk, we rub shoulders. So training is a lifelong thing. It's a difficult, it's a challenging thing. Sometimes I and my wife will be screaming, when will we stop training these children? How long will we keep training them? Because the same things, because in our own time, if they taught us one, two times, sometimes with the pulling of the ear, the thing will enter very deep for a lifetime. By this generation, you say the same thing a hundred times, even in many ways. It seems not to have stuck. Sometimes you feel like yelling that, oh, oh, it's so difficult being a parent. And I'm sure, I really praise those of you that are still in the class now. My experience in this school I'm teaching now, I, I'm not going to teach in just any school now, even if there's no, because I had to bring down myself. I was too patient. The attitude. When you give seat work, you are going around, you want to mark, you discover that some people didn't copy what you were, you were giving them on the board in SS2. All those 30 minutes in the science class. Because when I was in the class, if you are not serious, you can't stay in the science class for long. We weed people out. Because it's a rigorous training. You need to be meticulous. You need to be careful, attentive in science. You miss just any detail. So even if you go and read, it's not like carrying AC and just reading even what you are not there. So it's so challenging. So I really appreciate. Can we put our hands together for those of you still in the class? I'm not actively in the class. When I go there for training, I find it so, so, so irritating. I don't know how they have come this far. You are not ready for school. Then why are you in the class? Because we were mentally prepared. Very few were not mentally prepared. Our own time, they will have NFAs in secondary school, but they were not much. Those ones, when you see games, when it's in the house or yearly football, uh, sports festival, you see them. But during reading, they are not there. They are either sleeping or doing one thing or the other. But there were not many. But now, brilliant people don't want to read. That's why exam or practice is, is selling. If you know what is in your head, nobody can confuse you. My third child just wrote her SSC in a school in Makodi here. A school that's run by a Christian parent. And we took them there because we thought they run it on good principles. But when she went there, the woman herself came and announced that everything possible to pass the exams has been done for them. And then they started coming with things. Teachers were disturbing her and her, her other colleague that came from another school. She would turn it down that, no, she's okay. At the end of the day, the results are out now. She said most of those people have one problem or the other. Some of the subjects that they brought a lot of missiles for them, they even had D7, some F9. She has cleared all her papers. She said physics was very challenging in the AC. Many questions she couldn't attempt. She, she bent down and, and dozed off for 30 minutes. And then when she woke up, the Holy Ghost gave her ideas and she has a credit five in that physics. Because the Holy Ghost saw her commitment and rewarded her like Daniel's three friends and Daniel. But today we say, ah, we don't want to register. Who told you you will register two times? I didn't cheat in any school level, I can boast. So no, no preacher will preach about uh, uh, restitution, in, uh, about certificates, and uh, I will come out and, and start crying. I listened to the counsel of my parents and the Holy Ghost. I carried over many courses in Unijos. I had a spillover for one session, one semester. And I don't have any regrets. It's better than bringing things and then having scars. When you have wounds, scars last for eternity. So, may the Lord help us. Don't stampede anybody. Let nobody stampede you into cheating. And I discovered one thing. When you commit one type of offense or sin, it's easier to commit another one. I've learned that the, the impact of exam or practice on our children it's more than that exam. Do you know that there are a lot of things involved? Tax, uh, dubious, the way you be hiding the thing, the way you come, you know. It is easier for you when you get married too, to cheat on your wife or husband and cover it, isn't it? Because exam of practice is very tactical. Both the teacher and the student. Somebody will be passing like this as if he's late and he's dropping something. If you are a supervisor, you will not even know. And the children. People are writing on breasts, writing on laps. We heard that somebody even wrote on the baby's body. And we're being as if she, she's breastfeeding and checking the answers. <laughs> so that is how 
chop and clean mouth, start. And it starts because the conscience is one of the, the strongest, strongest assets of a human being. And today in the world, even the believers, their conscience is so zero, so dead. The apostles of old, their consciences were very sharp. That is why they, Paul said, be careful so that your conscience will not be seared. You know, when you drink tea, hot tea for long, I had a younger brother that we used to call him Meshai. He loved tea so much that when you give him tea, straight water, straight from the fire, he can drink. Such a person, his tongue must have become seared. You know, some people drink tea so much, they love tea. Just straight from the kettle like this, they will start drinking. You will be doing, blowing uh, uh, air from your mouth and drinking. They, they will start drinking it. So your conscience. So if you are involved this morning, he doesn't pay. The white man, not God, will say cheating does not. But why are we cheating? We are cheating in the class, cheating in relationship, cheating in the church when you come late and the pastor asks you, tell a lie. Vehicle broke down, there's no breakdown. You started late from home. And we think the Holy Ghost is there. Oh. He's not striking us like Ananias and Sapphira. But the Holy Ghost is watching and, and crying, oh my God. So why must we cheat? So may the Lord help us. Life is the first school. So God is interested in education. I'm a living example. God sent me to the class. When I went full time 2016, two of my fathers called me. One is a bishop in Jaws, spiritual fathers. He said, Ephraim, you had a lot of impact on students. Don't stop school contacts. Keep going to schools and teaching children. And another one called me one day. He has a prophetic ministry. He said, God told him that he's not done with me in school, doing school things yet. And then I thought I had a lot of work to do. So I began to pay attention, and I'm beginning to see. Just this session that ended, I had to be drafted to a school to teach chemistry for two. It was very difficult because of my schedule. But I had to do it as a call to duty. I've had to go to schools, intervene in schools. I've gone to NCCI how many times? When results are not going on, I train teachers, I train students. I've gone to Baptist High School. I think I saw somebody from Baptist High School here. I've been there to work on the chemistry students and the teacher several times. So I'm still going to the class. It's after I left 2016 that I wrote this book, 2018. And I'm revising it right now. I brought my sister and I'm about going to the printer to, to have a revision. But I'm not in the class. But I'm very current in chemistry. When instructions come out in practicals, they call me all over the schools. And most times what I give them, it ends up being, but I'm not in the class. That is why I say when you are a star, you cannot be hidden. Whether you are somewhere in one remote village, they will look for you when there's a challenge. So do the right thing. Excellence is being outstanding, not merging. I was reflecting because I write on social media a lot. Yesterday when I was coming back, I was reflecting that the Christian work is not conformity and compromise. That is what is happening. Reverend Schambach of Blessed Memory, an American preacher, said the greatest sin in the church then, in the 80s, was compromise. And I think it's worse now. We say it doesn't matter. They say it's your heart, the heart posture. What you wear doesn't matter. What you say doesn't matter. But Jesus said what? From the abundance of the heart, what? But today we are turning the gospel inside out or upside down. I don't know. And people, people pray, uh, shout and say, ah, he's the person is preaching well. That's why Apostle Paul said somewhere, who has bewitched you? Somebody says something that sounds strange or derogatory, but it's true. He said those are our cousins. When they are going to their worship center, they remove their shoes and enter with their brain. The way when we are coming to church, we remove our brains and enter the church with our shoes. So you see a professor. And me, I've been in the class so, where they are saying somebody should read mercy and the person is not doing well. They say you must read these signs. You must read it. People are not getting job in this. You must go and read the professional course. Who told you? The uh, uh, 
Papa Deboye and Kumuyis and all those ones that are big, big geos and some entrepreneurs today. What are the professional courses they read? Somebody that had one of the biggest fast food industries in Lagos, then terrorist. The man that owned terrorist, uh, this Briggs family from Rivers. He read theater arts. In Makodi here, Akwinkumi, Tito. Is it not mass communication the man read? But he's doing what a microbiology should do. Tito Yogurt ranks am among the best. In fact, I don't like taking those Hamdala and the other ones. When I even when final came, final doesn't taste like yogurt to me. Didn't taste. Tito is my number one yogurt. Apart from that one that they used to do somewhere in Jos. Is it was this Madara or what is the one? I think it's gone off from Farmek. We used to have that yogurt with one cow, local cow like that from Jos in those days. It seems I'm a, I'm in another gen. Very few, few people met that yogurt. They used to bring it from Jos. Somebody that read mass come is excelling. Can you see how Tito is expanding in Makodi? How many outlets? It is in Boko. In Makodi, there's even a drive in one village, the other one. But what did he read? Mass communication. I'm sure the parents would have said, you're a waste. It's not, it's not where you are located. It's where your heart is located. It's not what you read. If God wants to change your fortunes, you can buy a plot in one muddy place in Makodi here. But the Holy Ghost knows that there's gold there. Highest grade of gold. And you buy it maybe just 20,000. Years later, you discover gold there and they will dig it. And your story will change. It's not because you read accountancy or something else. Or you know how to speak so much that you are raising offerings and, uh, or you waving hands like this. Some of the ministers that even slay people in the spirit lay hands and people are slain. They are not even the wealthiest preachers. Hello. Hello. It seems you are not happy with me again. <laughs> so be careful. Life is a school. The knowledge of good and evil is a school. Remember that tree? It's a school. Knowledge of the tree of good and evil. So God is interested in education. He asks children to train. He's the author of education. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13. Let's see another scripture there. Are you a teacher and you are having problems with excellence? Go to God. God is a teacher himself. Jesus was a teacher. Isaiah 54, verse 13. All your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. So the Lord can teach you, can teach even the teacher. He has taught me so many times how to explain concepts. This book, the revised edition, I'm dedicating it to the Holy Ghost, the author. The concept, I didn't plan to write any book. Just ask me, write. I'll hear one day, start chapter this. This is what you write there. I'll write another day. When I started a revision, I thought I was through so many times. I'll carry pen again. So God, God is full of ideas. Our work with the Holy Spirit is very real and practical. I've dedicated you to the Holy Spirit direct. Whoever wants can buy. Those that are annoyed with the, the Holy Spirit being there will not buy. But because that is the truth. He authored it. I was just holding the pen and writing. And this revision is over 150 pages. This one is just about 50 or so. And it has solved problems. As small. Many children underrate it. Because it's small. I was selling 300, 400. So it, it looks more but it's compact. Even teachers when they see it. Because it came as a solution. Miles Moreau says, we are paid for problems we solve. I've been an examiner in WAEC, for example, since 1999. In NACO, since 2001. So, by and large, I'm being in the class. I know challenges people have in chemistry, like writing symbols correctly. They ask you to define a, a, an element. Element is a substance. And then you say, an element... It's a reaction. These are the things that make people fail. So in the exams, once something that is a substance and you say it's a reaction or phenomenon, you have lost the two marks for definition. And in my subject, you get two or zero. They write it in the marking scheme there. So these are things that even teachers are not complying in the marking. The teacher in the class marks that child that called element 
a reaction. But the child is going for SSC, they will not mark. And the person marking is not the teacher again. That's why the teacher has to be excellent. He has to go for marking of exams. If you are in the senior class or junior class, go for marking. The year I started going, I discovered that I, I, am, I don't like missing it. And I incorporate ideas. As I do lessons with students, I learn things. I've seen their challenges. I'm incorporating it in the books. So do things. Teach your problems. Change the way you have been teaching. When I came to Vatia College here, I discovered that it was not lesson notes, one lesson note for 10 years. Every session, Mr. Vatia will insist that we should change. Even if you are repeating the notes, he will ask you to transcribe it again. He believed in addition. He taught us that when you are doing lesson plan, consult many books. In fact, you have to write the references, even write the page. Because many of us write those books. Them. We just want to impress the person marking the, marking the lesson plan and the notes. The lesson plan and notes should come early enough, not just to look at methodology. What about the content? That is why teachers that mark notes should have an idea. If you have VP card, VP admin, dean of studies, and you are marking history notes, you have read English or you have an idea about history. Not that they carry history notes, content that you don't know and give because it's the VP admin or VP card or principal. That's what is happening in many schools. So you receive your children's notebook and you see wrong concepts because quality control is not well done. We insist that it must be VP, VP admin, dean. Maybe because there's allowance attached to it in those aspects. Many of us don't consult it. They just mark it. If you don't see any red or reprimand, they just close it. Hey, my, then you start shouting. Ah, sorry, uh, thank God I don't have any red. When there's red, you'll be quarreling administrator. Ah, see how admin just painted my, my lesson plan. But if you write a good plan, unless there's a squabble between you and the administrator, Nobody will want to just paint that thing like that. But if you are in administration, you can be mild unless it's a perpetual stubborn. I know there are stubborn subordinates. You say, go and change this. The next two weeks, they have not changed. If not, we have a middle line when a teacher is good. I believe the administrators here that mark notes. There should be a human face to administration too. I'll be an administrator up to the level of principal. A, a, a principal must not be a demon. Because some people are terrorists. Most times when we are administration, we are terrorists. When you are coming, everybody is in those days that they run away from village headmaster and principal. The principal is not a boss. He's the head, but he's not a boss. When your teacher is doing well, sometimes you even write with pencil, just underline. Because the red, too, if it's consistent, it means if the ministry comes or administrators, you are marking down that person, isn't it? So we can be friends. Not that we are condoning uh, mediocrity. You are having a human face. And you know a human being that is always seen red will be demotivated, isn't it? It's when the person is not changing you, you can paint it as much as possible as evidence tomorrow when the person is saying they didn't correct me. Hello? Have I said something that will help somebody? Okay. Because I know there have been crises. They are always writing, have you changed? When you change in a normal situation, you discover that the reds will be reducing. I think we should be drawing to a close so that we can take questions. So, be a great teacher. Be an outstanding teacher. Invest in your subject. Invest in your subject. Be passionate. That is the word. There are two kinds of passion a teacher will exhibit in subject and in school work. Be passionate about your subject. Be passionate about your students or learners. Whether they are university level. We, are, we have lecturers that treat their, their grown-up students as if they are, they, are, they are still children. And the students love them. Not that they are doing they are cheapening things. But there are lecturers also that are terrorists. That is why the National Council of Education said Everybody that is teaching, whether in seminary, must have a degree or a diploma in education. Because many of them are not applying the methodology of education. They have not implemented. I remember there was a time even Professor Charity Anger went for PGD with NTR, one of those universities. Because it's supposed to be a must, whether you're a professor of medicine, 
whether you are a theologian, you are supposed to have a qualification in education because many of us have done harm and sent out people that should have remained in the system. Discourage people because we are not following the rudiments of education so that you know the rules. We are sound in, uh, in content, but what is the other thing? Is it pedagogy? In pedagogical skills, many people are not. I went to the class for years. I was in the class from 94. It's around 2007 that I did PGD. But before my PGD, I was a good teacher already. When I went to read PGD, I discovered that I was implementing because the Holy Ghost led me. And I've seen people that even have PhD education that are so terrible. Go to our ministry. Ministry of Education is one of the most corrupt ministries. Yes. They say you didn't read, uh, register more. Bring money now. The money is in lieu of registration. There's an exam of practice here before it gets there in all those places. In faculties of education. I've done uh, a, 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 a course in education. Even in the universities, one of the faculties that there's a lot of taking, fish, money, all the sandwich and the rest. Is it not faculty of education? Has the story changed? You are looking at me as if I'm I have to tell ourselves that Nigeria has to change and change has to start with you and me. I went through courses in education. My colleagues that did in my own case. I, I didn't have to do that. Lecturers insist that they must write your thesis for you. If not, you will fail. Even when you say you want to write and get it, they say you must give me. Give me that 200,000. Give me that 500. Let me write for you. Is it a must? So how can corruption stop? Why people are my my boss's wife when she was doing a program in one of the universities? Say the woman that was a commissioner was not coming for lessons for masters in guidance and counseling. So the woman came crying one day that they and brought money. She refused that she she's not taking money. She had given money to all the other lecturers and they gave her a pass for that course unit for for their course unit. She, she refused that all she's saying she should come and sit for lessons and write her test. This woman cried and went to the, to the dean of faculty and the dean called the woman and said, ah, why are you making a, a commissioner to cry? <laughs> she refused and they had to release the woman to pass and she didn't sit down any day. This is how we have a lot of PhD today. A lot of governors, a lot of traditional rulers have PhD. Full-time courses. In less than three years, they are finished. When somebody that is doing five years has not been able to finish. Why they are on seat as governor, as this thing, they are finished under three years. And they flaunt it tomorrow. And we, employ, we are employing them in the universities now. Reverend Marlon, they are teaching here and other places. Because they have the PhD. That's why they will come and tell you stories. They give you assignment, they will never mark, you will not know. You never see those scripts. Because they cannot defend it. Let's close it so that we take contributions now because we have other ones. So be passionate about your subject. Invest in developing yourself. ICT. Go to the internet. Don't be crying that they didn't give you money for data. Pinch your money. When you bring that fact, I discovered why I was in the class and now a teacher that is versatile can win any day with administration of the students. You are teaching, I'm a chemist, I'm a scientist. But I'm very versed in current affairs and so, it, so many things. Even grammatical competence in English. So when I'm teaching chemistry, I'm not just teaching chemistry alone. I'm, when you call your name Mo Moses, I know that ideally that name is supposed to be what? Moses. Deborah. It's supposed to be what? Deborah. You can go ahead. Come and give her the mic. Thank you very much, sir, for that. You're welcome. For the teaching. Mm. It's been very enlightening. Thank you. You know, and eye-opening. 
for teachers. Mm. Just like he said, it would have been good if more teachers are here. Because the teaching sector is messed up. Mm. We need God. Seriously. The scripture you were supposed to read was Luke 16, 12. Okay. Yeah, Luke 16, 12. Thank you yes. very much. Can Thank we read it? Much, Luke 16, 12. When you are opportune to work for somebody, work well. Don't work shortly. That when you have your own, we are rewarding people. Luke 16. Somebody can read for us. Okay. Okay. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? God is expecting that with time. I don't own a school yet. I own one if the Lord allows me. But when I do this for people, I passion. I give them everything. Some people that are that apprentice learn under them, they say, no, I can't teach you everything you are doing me. I give people everything I know in any school I go to. They say, if you give what you will become irrelevant. No. God will always put me in giving something extra. Beyond what they are paying you. In fact, many times when I, I set out to do extra lessons, remedial lessons, I don't even charge. Though, some people take undue advantage. I just begin say, bring your child. Let's see what we can do. You know. Yes. I appreciate that she's also one person that has passion for students. She goes to secondary schools, goes to primary schools. She organizes uh, for us where some contemporary issues are addressed. So we partner together. We appreciate it for all you're doing and for coming. And she ha her and her husband. Yes, maybe. Okay, maybe if you're talking now next, you give us to you. Uh, let her introduce herself. And she's open to your schools, but paraventure she, she has not been to your school. Um, and after that, I think our daddy here will be giving us an opportunity for access. I want to trust that we take, we take this is to schools. Because these things has to, we have to be aggressive about it. All right, please go ahead. More introduction Thank you. and what you Thank do. you very much, yes. sir. My name is Vivian Ikpe. Vivian Ikpe, and by the grace of God, this time we are doing like a bringing all the secondary schools together to do a worldwide uh, a, 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 a joint all secondary school competitions mm -hmm. and by the grace of God we'll be coming to many of your schools just open it up because you are going to learn so much and your children are going to learn so much yeah. thank you thank you and sir sorry when when he came in before he spoke I saw the father in him I was like mm -hmm. this is you know because I know the father is somebody who is and then I saw that in him I was really encouraged you know it's good that a father can pass certain things into their children and then the children pass into other children and that makes the country a, the world a good and a better place thank you very thank much thank you for the compliment yeah. so wherever you are don't let them insult Jesus that you are lazy, always a person that is late. It's an insult to the image of God. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. So I really appreciate that I did not come from the beginning, and I don't know if my question is taking us too fast, but then you still let me know. You talk something about uh, when teaching these students up to the level of SS2. You give them work to copy. At the end of the day, they are still yet to even write something inside. Am I correct, sir? Yes. Uh -huh. So I really want to know, in such situation, how can we address that issue? Because most of the time, it's a recurring decimal. You see particular students still exhibiting that same trait. Mm -hmm. In as much as you try for them to meet up within that given period of time, they still fail to do that. And then secondly, the issue of our discipline. We are being made to understand that uh, this current uh, student that we have, mm -hmm. there's no point for corporal punishment. I see a lot of them going, hey, where I'm misbehaving. <laughs> so how can we curtail such as thank you uh, thank you very much did you tell us your name okay i go by the name is uh emmanuel tefanjo from kichito high school low level training a student or pupil is all about so many things and we talk about entry behavior not just in the class at the point of the child coming to the school what is the attitude of the child but many schools are interested in population Somebody that has gone through a school up to SS2 should have been groomed well to know why he or she is in school. So we shouldn't have been having such challenges. So it may be, it may have to be a, a thing of counseling and 
reorientation, reformatting that child. Maybe the other teachers that have been coming have not been emphasizing that. From other environments I have been, every teacher is doing the same thing. It's not only one teacher that you go in, you are not writing. When you go for mass, you are not writing, you'll be reprimanded. They will discover you. Go to English. But sometimes you discover that just few teachers bother. Some will face, face the board and write for 30 minutes. I have not turned back. When I was in the class, my student knew that I knew even their voices. If I was writing on you, I would turn and call your name. These are some of the traits of a good teacher. You don't keep writing. Sometimes administrators pass by the window. They will not let you know. They will hang there for 10 minutes. Five students were sleeping. You will not notice. When they come in, you have thought for about five, 10 minutes, 20. A good teacher should be, when you see, sometimes, sometimes, you just ask everybody to stand up. Because we have discovered that when you teach for so long, many concepts you drop. Those people will suddenly wake up and say, ah, sir, I don't understand. And they'll be drawing you back. So, in administration, how many people are in administration here? Do you know that students sleeping in your class is poor class control? <laughs> but many teachers do it. They will fire, they enjoy the math, the history so much that they are not looking back. You are supposed to be looking back, even going around. In fact, when you are going around, everybody becomes conscious. Don't stay in one place. You know, when you are talking, then you are writing, you go back. Some people remain rooted in one place. You know, when you are going around, even those at the back, they know that this person goes around. So, it has to be a matter of counseling. It can't be one teacher or one day. But the problem can be solved by a school having a policy of telling the children, having clubs where they will tell them the importance of note-taking and writing. I hope I've answered the question. Okay. Okay, the second. Discipline. Somebody was just telling us about one of my wife's cousins in, in UK. They are in the United Kingdom. They were born there, but they are Nigerians. So he's out to the streets. He tell them they are British citizens, but when they come in, they are Nigerians. <laughs> so he can beat them, he handles them inside his room. That is in UK. Many schools are running our systems based on American. We have seen the results of US, UK, uh, Europe and America, LGBTQ and the rest. And we want to follow it. Our missionaries that were here that went out, my child doesn't want this. Uh -uh. But the Bible says, uh, spare the rod. So, many schools are retracing their steps. If you don't want to, there should still be punishment. By the time you give somebody some manual work to do, one or two things, in some cases, like in some of the schools I served, even during assessment week, if you miss assessment, nobody's giving you makeup because of your punishment. They will score you zero. So it, you have a disadvantage already in the exam. So tomorrow you learn to be careful not to commit an offense that will make you lose classes. Maybe they gave you punishment, you were serving it during test. So there are things that you can do apart from if they say there should be no corporal. But I think that is some of our African things we do, they are okay. Even those people have started doing it. We are having challenge. We must not copy everything from the white man wholesale. Unfortunately, they say that is a policy on education. But those are our people that are in charge of education, most those are our cousins. Right from their, their schools. Don't they touch children? Is it not even weep? That they use on little children for not uh, reciting. Does it make sense? So it's today I want to know how I'm supposed to share the lesson. I should go to number two. Yes. Number two, in lesson plan, I want to know uh, the function of summary book and lesson notes and lesson plan. Which one can one use in writing on the board? Is it lesson plan, is it lesson note, or the summary book? What is the work of summary book? Number three, I want you to throw uh, a little light on methodology. I did not get it very well. And the last one, I want to uh, also to give me one example of an average teacher and a great teacher. Thank you. OK, I'll begin from the last. We say the average teacher is a teacher that is just earning salary 
Just keeping soul and body together. That is the average teacher. He doesn't care about anything. Whether heaven is falling down in that school, whether children are copying notes or not, it doesn't bother. Then the great teacher, we, we say, is the one that affects the lives of the learners for eternity. Some of their best teachers were even professors. They told us the story of a professor in Ife that was a professor of ICT. He would teach so diligently. There was a time he was teaching the class and one lady was not understanding. He called her one day and played a game and gave her the test that he was going to give students and told her not to tell anybody. So when they give the test, she scored very highly, but he didn't score it. It was just to motivate her to boost her morale, but he was a lecturer in the university. And that he changed the lady's performance in that subject. It's later on he revealed with the class that that is what he did. He just made her to pass for once and pass well. But that is a lecturer in the university that we say we lecture, we don't teach. Is that not a song? But somebody was ready to look at somebody and change her life. So, there are people that look at you. They can even give you, we have had teachers that give you money to even type your, your uh, term paper. They even give you their typewriter. Buy some, so those of us in the science, some will even buy reagents for you. Some of us experienced it. But some will not care whether you are going to steal to come and do the research. They give you an assignment, go and type a thousand pages, they don't give a damn. They don't know about the situation. So that's why we're saying the great teacher looks at the personality of the child. Is the person battered? Does the person need help? Is the person sick? Some lecturers can postpone a test because they have discovered that something happened and many students are not in class. That day they will postpone it and wait for another time. So that is why we're saying a great teacher is the one that impacts on people when they live long, they will still remember you. We have heard stories of people that students look for them nationwide. Where is this teacher? And they decided to build a house and give the teacher or buy a car for that person. He remembered and they kept asking. Then their mates discovered and they surprised the person. Methodology. A good lesson plan should be student-centered. Not the teacher pouring everything. You know that we say no child is a tabra rasa, an empty slate. But some people want to prove all the jargons. You are in an environment that the children cannot understand uh, Queen's English. You are just being fener fener there. If need be, cheap in pigeon. Sometimes you cheap even the vernacular in some places and explain some things. Is that also? When I write some things in chemistry that are not common here, I put the names of that thing in bracket or inverted commas that they will know that this is the name of that thing in our environment here. But some of us copy our textbook. Wholesale, we are photocopiers. That's why students sometimes don't want to copy your notes. You'll be wondering. Because they are not seeing anything. Say, ah, this thing is in page this of this book. Your notes should have some inputs from where you went for marking, from this other textbook, from your own knowledge. Summary book, I'm hearing about this for the first time. Because summary, most times, is in the lesson plan now. You summarize that lesson, your lesson plan. Lesson plan is a guide. It's like a plan, systematically. Lesson plan can actually be marked by virtually anybody, but it's also better for a professional. Because you look at the age and suitability, or maybe your teaching age, if it's a professional. If you bring physics to me now, I read chemistry, but I, I know physics, and you are teaching SS1, you are talking about measurements, and uh, I didn't see certain things there. Maybe I didn't see meter rule, I didn't see um, uh, scale, and uh, all those things. I will know, but somebody that is from history or English, unless he has interest, he may not know, he will just look at them, the steps. The steps, step one, two, three, conclusion, summary. Even what is there, he doesn't know whether the, the, the facts are well captured. That's why even the plan, ideally, anybody can mark it. But if there's a professional that knows that area, or the person, some people are versatile. We discovered with the late Mr. Vatia, he was an engineer, but there was a time he marked our notes for two years. And he will call you and correct you in visual art. And what he has said is true. He even give you links. He will say satire. Even though he didn't read maths, he can teach you how to do that topic in maths better than a maths major. But ideally, the maths majors, if there are many in the school, they are supposed to be doing conference planning where they will sit down and discuss and then go and do their individual plans. So you don't claim that I'm the HOD maths. So everything maths, I don't need to go to anybody. You can have somebody that even has NCE, that has a better way of teaching that your maths in SS3 than you that is a maths a, a graduate. 
That's why we say subjects should have subject meetings where they discuss the plans and what they are going to do for that week. But the lesson notes is ID for somebody that because we have seen sometimes what they are captured is not correct. Even names on graphs are not correct. Only a professional can do that or somebody that knows the field. So it's better. I think that's what I can say there. The one to be written on the board is a lesson note, of course. And should be sketched. Many of us give too detailed notes. The children have too many subjects now. You copy historical background, everything. Give some things as assignments or projects. The notes are too bulky. And we pass them from one child to the other. It takes two weeks. And there will be uh, mutation. Before you know, they become that. When it has gone through, this one will copy, go to this one, go to that one. Before the notebook comes to you, sometimes it's in, in shreds. The idea things, sketch notes, you should be able to dictate or copy them yourself. That is the best way to do it. Don't need very bulky notes where everybody has the textbooks. Then, who is to vet, I think we have said it, who is to vet the plan? Could be the administrator, if he's a suitable person. I may not be an administrator. In Vatia College, for example, some posts are rotatory. You can be HOD after a while, another person. While I'm teaching in the class, I'm no longer HOD. I may be the most senior chemistry teacher. I'm the head of chemistry. So I, I should be able to vet chemistry. Not that they will carry everything because I'm no longer HOD. Then they will give somebody that is HOD that just came now because it rotated. You give the most competent person in that subject. So I hope I've answered wow. that. Wow. Can we appreciate God once again? All right. Because of time, I know there's so much that I uh, would have said, but we'll stop at this point. But I want to do, give a recommendation. There's what Temple Gate does. Temple Gate Academy, thank God the administrator and assistant are here. Before the resumption, like now, I think as yes. the school resumes, they do a, a, a training mm -hmm. for their teachers. That week you're preparing to resume. They mm -hmm. take two, three days. I know some schools still do it. Yes, most. I want to recommend, I want to believe that he will be available. It will be available, and um, we also are part of that. So just uh, connect after now so that we can break this down. You just want two teachers out of many teachers in your schools. And some of you are desiring that the rest of it. This teacher would have been here to hear this. But thank God that you have heard mm -hmm. this. So we we'll trust God to create opportunity to take it down to the school level. So we'll co connect after now. My phone number can be dropped for them. There's WhatsApp, so yeah. they can reach me. Yeah. I'm on Facebook also, Mashika Ephraim. So they can reach me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We appreciate you. All right.